Welcome to my homestead, y'all. I'm your host, Jenny Veliki, also known as the Funky Farm Girl. I'm working to create a home with a little farm, a little faith, a lot of food, and a bit of funky. I'm learning all about growing and preserving our food supply, raising chickens and children, and becoming more self-sufficient while leaning hard on Jesus. And I want to take you along for the ride. So grab yourself a cup of something wonderful, and let's visit a while. Hey y'all, this is Jenny Veliki and you're listening to the Funky Farm Girl podcast. This is episode 30, Block Scheduling. I'm so glad you're here. So sit back and let's have a chat about how to schedule our time. But before we do that, I have a story for you. Every week on the podcast, I have a little segment at the beginning titled, What's Happening on the Homestead? This week, I want to let you know what's going on with our two roosters. When we got our four black mixed chicks, which are a mix of black copper moran and Easter eggers, we hoped that we had four hens, but we actually got two hens and two roosters. And as they've grown, we've decided that it's perfectly fine that we got two roosters because we want to do some breeding in the spring anyway. So why not keep both of them? But the problem was two roosters and three hens, because we also added in little Hazel, our black copper Moran, just was not a good mix. Because having two roosters and only three hens is just asking for a problem. So, as we considered what to do, these hens and chicks, and roosters, by the way, are named after the characters from Scooby-Doo. So, we have Fred, the very fancy rooster, Shaggy, the not-so-pretty rooster, and then we have Velma and Daphne, the two hens, and Hazel, our black copper moran. So after thinking about it for a while, I really didn't think that it was fair that Shaggy should lose his home just because he's not as pretty as Fred. And thinking through the problem, I decided that what we needed to do was move the Shaggy into the larger chicken run with our Steel Magnolia girls and our Golden Girls. So that would be our our white Leghorns and our Isa Browns. So there are six of the white leghorns and four of the Isa Browns. And so I figured that would give Shaggy plenty to do. And then Fred would be happy with the three black chickens um, so that we could have pretty chicks in the spring. Well, it didn't exactly go as planned. So first of all, Fred started crowing all the time. Day in, day out, all day long. Crow, 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 crow. There's nothing more awkward than going and apologizing to your neighbors about the fact that your rooster's crowing all the time. Except when they say, what rooster? (laughs) Apparently, we live just far enough away that our rooster doesn't bother the neighbors, which is a good thing, especially in this scenario. So thankfully, Fred wasn't bothering anybody but us, But his crowing all day long was really an issue. On top of that, Shaggy was in with the six other, the ten other hens. And he wasn't having a good time either. He was constantly being run into the chicken coop to hide. Because the ten hens would just gang up on him and peck at him. And push him away from the food and run him off every time he tried to come out. And because he was in their laying spot, they didn't want to lay any eggs. So egg production stopped. Shaggy wasn't eating. Fred was crowing all the time. It was just chicken mayhem over here. Finally, I had an idea. I googled what makes chickens crow all day and found out that Fred had a problem. He was bored and he needed more lady friends. So we fixed it. We moved Shaggy in with the three black chickens, 
Now he has a, a calmer flock that is a lot more docile like he is. And he's ruling the roost there just fine. And then Fred is able to enjoy all 10 of the ladies over in the big run. He has plenty of room to do his job and also eat and keep his ladies in line. So everybody's happy. Fred's not crowing. We're getting a few more eggs, but not that many more because winter is coming. And the black chicks and Shaggy are all happy as well. So that's what's happening on our homestead this week. You can check out my Instagram page to see a picture of Fred. Shaggy refuses to be photographed. So let's get into this week's episode. This week we're talking about block scheduling. Now this is something that I was not familiar with until just a couple weeks ago. And I was talking to my good friend Brandy about just the struggle as a homesteader to juggle everything. And I know that this isn't just common with homesteaders. This is a common issue that most people have. You have a job maybe outside the home you have children to take care of you may be dealing with virtual school right now with COVID-19 you may be trying to juggle housework and maybe you have farm chores maybe you have animals that you're taking care of maybe you're trying to learn some self-reliant skills and you just don't know where you have time to fit it all in on top of that homesteaders tend to not lean towards the most efficient way to do something possible because we're not about convenience and efficiency. We're about preserving the old ways, about doing what's the best practice rather than what's the quickest and easiest. So lots of time that that means things like baking bread instead of buying it at the store or preserving food like pickles instead of buying those at the store, making our own jams, making clothes or or other things by hand Um, there's just so many things that we do that take up more time than is typical and all of those things come together to just really be a reason to need to manage our time better and last week we had a post that I did about the block schedule and my friend Marie commented that she doesn't know how I do it all. So newsflash, I don't. Uh, Right now my kitchen counter is slap full of dishes and they are left over from the weekend and Monday's big kitchen day. Uh, We're still trying to slog through all those dishes and really it hit the bottom of the list for those things to be done because what was more important was processing and preserving the last of the garden harvest when the frost hit and just trying to record this podcast going to see a friend I haven't seen in a long time the lots of things that came first and it just pushed those dishes out of the way so today we've been working on catching up on dishes but no it's not ever that I'm doing all things and doing all of them well But this block schedule has really helped me to organize my time better and prioritize the things I want to focus on. And because I have a focus, it really helps me hone in on the work that needs to be done and when to do it. And it helps me get it done in a much better way. So let's dive in and talk about the block schedule. The first thing I want to do is give all the credit to Jordan Page. Jordan Page is awesome. If you're not following her on YouTube or on Instagram, I highly recommend that you go and find her. I'm going to leave a link in the show notes to her um, social media so that you are able to go and read the post that she made about the block scheduling and watch the video that goes with it. I highly recommend the video and really, really watch all the way to the end. She goes through more than one scenario and it's just a really, really helpful video to help you understand more about block scheduling and why it works and how it works and different ways it can be implemented. So go check that out in the show notes after this episode. So 
how do you implement a block schedule? Well, if you think back to being in school, when each class period had its own set time, you had your before school when you were getting ready, your after school where you did activities, and then you came home and had dinner and then homework time and then bed. Um, your day had a set rhythm. And I'm sure that for most of us, that went away after high school. And when we're given all the time in the world, we tend to waste it because we feel like there's so much of it. Or we don't know what to focus on first because our list is so big and there's so many different things. Or we create a really tight schedule, but some of the things we need to do take more than an hour to do it. And maybe we only have an hour scheduled for house cleaning, but it really is going to take us two hours that day. Or maybe we only do that once a week and it gets really, really detailed and really, really difficult to keep up with. Can you relate? Are you seeing where I'm coming from? So what do we do? The first thing you need to do is group your things that you typically do into chunks. So each chunk is going to be a block on your schedule. So for me, I have five blocks, I believe. My first one is my morning time. I am slow to wake up. I know this about myself. I accept this about myself. I decided that I don't have to be an early bird because I don't really like worms. Maybe you can relate to that too. So in the morning, I have from 6.30 or whatever time I, I wake up that day until 9.30 to have my coffee and to let it hit my bloodstream and hit my brain so that I'm able to be awake and functioning and and aware of what's going on around me. It gives me time to eat my breakfast. It gives me time to make sure that the girls are up, that they're getting dressed, that they've um, had their breakfast. I take my medicine. I brush my teeth. I put on my clothes. I make sure that my hair is brushed. All those kinds of things. First thing in the morning up until 930 and at 930 an alarm goes off on my phone and I know it's time to get to work. Now for me what works best is to have a pretty loose definition of what this next chunk of time is and the reason it works so well for me is because that's a loose chunk of time. For the next three hours from 930 to 1230 I might be doing cleaning the house like those dishes that are piled up on the counter. Or I might be weeding the garden or planting something, um, spreading straw, dealing with my compost, doing something to the chicken coop. I may be inside scrubbing a toilet, washing dishes, sweeping the floor. I may need to pay bills or any of those kinds of things that are involved in running a house and running my homestead all of the work involved. The great thing about having it all in one chunk like this is first of all, it's a three hour chunk. You can get a lot accomplished in three hours when you know to just hone in and focus on those specific things. And because it covers such a wide range of activities, I can do the thing that is most urgent that day, focus on it and then see what's next and not have to worry about, oh, well, I only have an hour for housework and an hour for gardening and an hour for food preservation. No, instead I have three hours that I can focus on one of those three things or maybe two of those three th things. But I'm not restricted to just one. So three hours is a good length of time to get a lot accomplished. As soon as that three hours is over, bling, there's another alarm. And then it's my lunch time. My lunch time, because of the way my schedule runs and the way my daughter's work schedule runs, tends to be that from 12.30 to 2.30, if I have any errands to run, that's when I run them. If I'm having a special lunch or something like that, that's when it happens. Um, or like a coffee date or something like that. It's also when I take a nap. If it's just been a rough day 
and I don't have any errands to run, I can lay down during that time. I can paint or do other art during that time. I can read a book. So there's a pause in the middle of my day, sort of a siesta time. Sometimes, sometimes it's a running around town time. Sometimes it's a coffee date time. But again, because the definition of it is a little more loosey-goosey, then I am able to make it work every day. So from 2.30, from 12.30 to 2.30, I am having my lunch time, errand time, free time. And again, that depends on the day and what I'm doing, but the fact that that focus is there every day is what's really important. Then at 2.30, my alarm goes off and then my work day begins. And when I say work day, I know that those first three hours in the morning were work too. And don't discount that at all. That's some of the hardest work I do is during those first three hours. And it's also why I do it then because that's when my energy is highest. In the afternoon, when I'm a little slower and I'm a little less energetic, that's when I can sit down at my computer and focus on my podcast. This is when I record episodes, when I plan ahead, when I start to create some course content that I'll share with you later on, when I start to plan out what my posts will be on social media, I work on my web page, all those kinds of things happen during those three hours. And really, those three hours are the reason that I started this to begin with. Everybody knows that your list can just be endless. And especially when you are running a household or you have children, that list never ends. There's never a time that you cross the last thing off your list and put your feet up and say, all right, I'm done. I'm good for the next three or four days. I wish that were a reality, but it's not. And so because I know that that list never ends, but because I always felt like the things on that list came before my quote unquote hobby of podcasting, I never had the time set aside to really grow this as a business and give it the time it needed to be able to to expand and to do more with it. And because I never had the time, it never grew. So with the block schedule, I have three hours that I can devote every day to the work that I need to do at home. And then I have three hours in the afternoon every day to devote to the work of the podcast. And one that makes it feel less like a hobby and more like a a legit business, which it is. And two, it really gives me time to do the work that needs to be done and also to fill my creative cup and be creating things and working on content for you guys and that really re-energizes me and recharges me to be able to work hard the rest of my day. The next section of my day starts at 5.30 and goes until 8.30. And that is the evening hours. And during that time, I will start, I will make dinner, we'll clean it up. We have a little routine where I make a lunch for Michael And I set up the coffee pot for the next morning so that all we have to do is push the button. Because who can make coffee when you haven't had coffee yet, right? So I get all that done and then I put my feet up and I spend time with my family. And because I've worked hard in the morning on the house and the homestead and I've worked hard in the afternoon on my business then I can stop and rest and take that time to soak in and be fully present with my family in the evening so after dinner until 8 30 we're together as a family I really try to make this a time that we unplug definitely not perfect and definitely would like to be a lot better at this but it's something that we're working on as a family so From 5.30 to 8.30, we have that time that we're just chilling out, spending time together. Maybe we watch a show. Maybe we play a game. Maybe we just sit and talk and goof off. 
And then at 8.30, the last section of my day is the bedtime routine. The girls go and get ready for bed and they are in their beds by nine o'clock. I go and do my bedtime routine. I get in my bed and then I have about an hour to just unwind. Um, my brain goes 100 miles an hour from the mor- moment I wake up until I go to sleep. And so I need that time at the end of the day to kind of rev down a couple notches so that my body's ready to go to sleep. So think through what your day looks like. What are the things that in a typical week you need to have done? How many of those things are common that you can chunk together and create your own block schedule? So let's talk about a few tips that really make this work well. Number one, you need to chunk like tasks together. Like I said, I made my categories as broad as I could, but still specific enough to keep my focus. So I have my my work as a wife and mom and homesteader, and then I have my work as a podcaster and entrepreneur. And being able to divide my time like that is really, really helpful for me. Now, I am fortunate that I am in a stage of life where my kids are older and they're pretty self-sufficient. They can do a lot of their schoolwork without me. Um, They are able to get their chores done and things like that with without me having to stand there and hold their hand or help them. So I am not in the young children stage. Maybe you are. And so you're block schedule may look different. You may need to work it around nap times. You may need to work it around when your kids are energetic and you're sitting and focusing on spending time with them. And then times when you're able to occupy them in other ways so that you're able to focus and get work done. Make it work for you. And one of the ways that we do that best is by grouping like things together. Chunk them all into one section see how many sections you end up with try to keep that as minimal as you can the number of sections another thing that's really helpful is to make sure that you use big time frames like i said having an hour by hour schedule is not the same as block scheduling an hour by hour schedule five minutes can really throw you off and In a three-hour block, it's not going to throw you off quite as bad. It's also really hard to accomplish everything that you need to in a one-hour time slot. So being able to have a little bit more broad focus and a a larger time to work on it is really going to help you see a lot more progress and productivity Plus, when you're able to focus on something for a long length of time versus switching your focus every hour, it's going to allow you to be more productive because you're not having to switch gears so often. You can maintain that focus in that one area for longer and you're going to see more productivity in that area because you are able to stick in there and stay with it for a longer period of time. And the other thing that I recommend is that you do the same schedule every single day. Now, I know that some of you are like, but I have this on this day and I have this on that day. How many of those things happen around the same time of day? See how many of them as COVID um, becomes less and less of a, a thing to work around and you're adding things back into your schedule, see how many of those you can keep in the same little time slot so that you can make that your activities block or you can make it your morning coffee block or whatever you need to do to make it work for you. This is your schedule that works for you. It's not a schedule that you're working against. Um, Sometimes... There are situations where maybe you work, but you only work part-time. Or maybe you have kids in school two days a week and at home three days a week. 
In those cases, it may be wise to make an A-B schedule where on A days you're doing um, certain routine because your children are in school and you're able to accomplish a lot more and focus more on your tasks. And then you have a B day where most of your time is focused on helping them with their work and less time is spent on productivity stuff at home. So outside of that, don't really recommend that you switch it around because then it doesn't tend to be as effective. Again, when you have to switch gears from one thing to another, it's harder for your brain to maintain focus and keep up with it. When you have the same schedule every single day, your brain goes on autopilot with it and you will accomplish a whole lot more. So fellow homesteaders, fellow home managers, how do you schedule your time? Do you even like the word schedule? I personally kind of cringe at it, but this block schedule has been the bomb in my house. So I'd love to hear what you think of the block schedule. Go to my Instagram page, The Funky Farm Girl, and scroll down and look for the picture of the block schedule and leave me a comment and let me know how you like this system as an option for productivity in your home. Maybe it will give you the time you've been looking for to build up your skills in self-reliance and learn a new thing. This month, I'm really, really focusing on building up my reviews on iTunes. So I would love it if you could go to the Apple Podcast app, click the little magnifying glass in the top right hand corner, type in the Funky Farm Girl, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click write a review then go in there and give me five stars and maybe even leave a little word or two about what you love about the podcast i really really would appreciate any reviews that you can leave me even if all you can do is click the five stars that is much appreciated those reviews help me get in front of more eyes which puts me in front of more ears so every review counts A lot like your voting did today. (laughs) So go leave me a review. And next week we will be talking about homesteading with teenagers. There's lots and lots of people out there that you can get advice from. With homeschooling with little kids. With homesteading with little kids. But I want to give you the spin on what to do when you're homeschooling. Homesteading with teenagers. We do both, so it's hard to keep them straight in my mind. So join me next week. We'll talk about Thanks for stopping by, y'all. If you're inspired by what you've heard today, the best compliment you can give me is to share the Funky Farm Girl with your friends. You can stay connected by following the Funky Farm Girl on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until we meet again next week, remember to bloom where you're planted. <laughs>